This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. If you are looking to create a comprehensive PPC strategy to let more people discover your products, boost your conversions, and increase repeating orders from existing customers, then this episode is for you. Our guest today will share with us his strategy to cover the full buying cycle with ADOC PPC campaigns that aim at turning simple Amazon users into loyal customers of your brand. I'm joined today by Mike Zagari, the owner and founder of PPC Entourage, one of the original Amazon ad software and management company, which has been acquired by Carbon6. Mike started off as a physical therapist in 2015 and just knew that there had to be a better way. So he started his e-commerce journey. And using the power of Amazon ads, he built a seven-figure brand in less than one year. Now he helps other sellers to do the same with free, valuable education, PPC, entourage, software, and the ad agency. Hey, Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Hey, John Marco. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Yes, yes. So I'm very, very curious to have this talk because uh, I've I've learned from you basically this this approach to to structure PPC campaigns based on the different stages of the buying cycle, right? So this is something that I think it totally makes sense, but there is really not many people uh, talking about this. So I'm really curious to to learn from you more about this. So why don't you uh, share with us uh, why Amazon sellers should consider structuring PPC campaigns based on the, the stages of the buying cycle and what can they expect doing that? Sure. Yeah. So when I started doing Amazon ads years ago, things were really simple. You know, you find keywords that are relevant to your products, you set it up, people go to Amazon and you present your products in front of them. It was simple and easy. Throughout the years, Amazon came out with various different ad types, sponsored brand ads, sponsored brand video ad, and sponsored display more recently. And it's quite obvious that there's a strategy that you can put in place behind all of these different ad types. Not all of them are good at certain places of where customers are at and if they're ready to purchase your product or not. So it really does depend on the product and the category that you're selling. Some customer buying cycles, which refers to the process that all shoppers go through when they're purchasing your product, some customer buying cycles are relatively short. It could be two minutes. In fact, I had an example of that that I can share with you. It could be 30 days. It could be several years of people going through a process before they're ready to make a purchase. So really quick, when I uh, was up one night, I was on my phone scrolling through Instagram and I saw an ad for this low, it was a, a, a sock that was like a low uh, sock below the shoe like so that people couldn't see the actual sock. It's for people with big feet and I have that. So I didn't know this actually existed and the, the actual ad, this person was getting pulled across the soccer field by this, this different, uh, this, um, this, this sock. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I didn't know this exists. So in that moment, I was now aware of a new product. That's called brand awareness. And it struck me right then and there. I'm like, holy crap, this is something I've had a problem with my entire life. I have huge feet. This solves a problem that I, that I could you know, potentially benefit from. So then in that same exact ad, they go through all of the considerations that I could have made. Well, what if I could just buy a cheaper one on, on Target or in Walmart? Like, how about, what about that? They were showing me that those socks fall off feet easily, that they make you sweat, all of these different things. So I, in that actual two minute frame, I was considering the alternatives and I was saying to myself, okay, well, this seems like a really viable product. And then they put up the call to action, shop now, buy this now, it's on a set, it's on discount, there's a coupon. And I was like, okay, let me go ahead and purchase these because it fills that need. And the reason why I bring this up is in those two minutes, I went through the entire customer buying cycle. And this is what sellers and shoppers are doing as they're going on Amazon. They're seeing certain products, they're seeing different brand ads, different sponsored display ads. They're considering your products. Maybe they've heard about you on TikTok or Instagram or something, and they're going to Amazon to see what other alternatives are out there. 
Or maybe they know what they want and they just are going to Amazon and you have to serve your ads right when they're ready to purchase in the decision phase. So that was a little bit long-winded. And just to, to sum it up a little bit, there's the awareness phase when you become aware of the product. There's the consideration phase when you're, eva you're evaluating alternatives, you're looking to see if it's which is the best product that fits your needs. There's a decision phase where you go there and you make a decision and you purchase that product. And then there's the post-purchase phase where hopefully you've gained a customer and they come back and purchase from you again. Yeah, that's very interesting. I think it's even more relevant because we know, I, I don't I remember right now the exact statistic, but uh, you, you may know, but the we know that Amazon is one of the main search engine for a product research, right? So people are going there not only to buy, but just whenever they're curious to to learn more about products. So these all make sense because because Amazon customers, you know, go through the whole buying cycle within Amazon itself. So uh, that makes absolute sense to to create PPC campaigns ad hoc for all of these all of these stages. So let's go through one by one each of these stages and I'd love to you to uh, give us you know the ad types and strategies and best practices that we should adopt in each of these uh, buying cycles. So you know in the end we would like to you know master the uh, PPC campaigns in each of these cycle in each of these stage of the cycle. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about awareness first and let's go over sponsored product ads. So if you're looking to get awareness and basically to drive impression share, there's a couple of ad types that are going to fit the need for sponsored product ads. Keep in mind that inherently by their nature, sponsored product ads are lower in the funnel compared to sponsored brand ads and sponsored display ads. So we are sort of using this in an awareness bait, awareness way, but just keep in mind that they're just really, they really look native. So they're more lower in the funnel. So when you think about an automatic campaign and you set that up and you set it up with loose match and compliments, those are two of the different ad types that might be considered uh, more of awareness because they're getting uh, loosely related terms or they're getting to complementary categories. And this might hit in some of the sub niches that maybe is related to your category, but not directly your category. This way you're getting that awareness. More recently, Amazon uh, started uh, with expanded product targeting which essentially is a broad match version of product targeting, where you pick an ASIN and it's going to target ASINs related to that ASIN. So that's more of a broad match, um, and that could be considered more of an awareness phase as well. Of course, you have the category targeting, and also there is more loosely, uh, more discovery-based keywords. This is a really big thing. So even though you're using sponsor product ads and it's lower in the funnel, if you're using keywords that are more discovery-based, and there's a really great way to tell if you um, if you go to the search query performance report and you look at the performance of search terms and you go into the ASIN view, you can see which search terms people are more more browse based search terms versus more high intent based search terms. So in this phase of the customer buying cycle, when you're going after awareness, check out the more broad um, sort of like awareness based uh, search terms. And you could do that by seeing which one of these search terms customers are clicking on and, and searching, like clicking and purchasing right away. And you could see like some, some customers aren't, they're not purchasing right away. They're, they're viewing more items and they're not making the purchase. There's a low purchase intent. So that's sponsored product ads. Uh, the best type of ad though, in my opinion, is sponsored brand ads where you're positioning your products in a different way. Um, you could be going after categories and showcasing your brand and you can showcase your whole entire brand, uh, your whole brand line. So for example, let's say you wanted to go after a category, you're selling cat litter mats, but you wanted to go after cat litter. You could then go after cat litter in like a brand discovery based campaign using sponsored brand ads. That'd be a fantastic way to do it. And you could even do it with sponsored brand video ads. Now, the thing with this is there's a slight difference in the strategy. If you're going after brand awareness, you're going to want to send them to your storefront page, your home page. So this way, there's a chance for them to see all of the products in your category line. They're not looking for something specifically. You want to make them more aware of what you have to offer. So by driving them to your entire storefront, they can then see what's in your product, in your, uh, product line. They can go and make a decision and see you know, what's right for them. 
Uh, more recently, this could be done with sponsor brand video as well. So whereas before it was, you know, just targeting a certain, certain ASIN, now you can use sponsor brand video to, you know, drive awareness. And it's really great too, because you're not paying unless they click. So you're getting that awareness anyway, um, which is just great to get the, that impression, all those impressions. Sponsored display can be used this way as well. Very simple and straightforward. Um, you know, keep in mind that if you're looking to get awareness, your headline is going to be a little bit different as well, as opposed to like more of a strong call to action type of headline. We have all of these headlines available on our website. We have a headline creator. If you go to ppcentourage.com, you can see that. And there's a stark difference between brand awareness, um, even, even headlines where it's more consideration, those are different. And the strong call to action, those are going to be different as well. So lots of components that go into all of this. Um, but I hope I made that a little bit clear. Yeah, okay. Sounds great. Uh, usually, you know, I've heard of, you know, dividing keywords based on the purchase intent for, you know, Google ads, for example. That's that's very common. But, you know, people are not talking much about doing that for, for Amazon, right? So do you suggest to put to differentiate campaigns based on the purchase intent that it showed through the, the keywords? Or should we, I mean, how do you go about that, this different keywords? Yeah, so there's going to be purchase intent keywords that are high and purchase intent keywords that are low. And the search query performance report will really help to tell that story. So if you have brand awareness campaigns, I would go after the ones where there's lower purchase intent. And the cool thing about this is you could then put a budget behind that. You know, this that's one of the benefits of using this strategy is if you have a budget specifically for the types of campaigns that are going to give you brand awareness, then you're not going to be blowing your entire budget on the brand awareness campaign. So, you know, these are going to be the, typically the campaigns that have higher ACoS, um, lower conversion rate, all of that stuff. So by identifying those keywords, that's important because you have to plant the seeds. I believe it takes up to 28 touch points on average for Amazon sellers to make a purchase. So you want to collect those touch points. And the whole point of the brand awareness campaign is to collect those touch points. But yes, you have to identify what those keywords are um, that are where you're going to get that more of that brand awareness. The other thing I want to say about this, and this is important as well, shoppers are acting a little bit differently based on the time of the day. Um, the highest purchase intent is in the uh, early morning hours of Eastern Eastern time zone, like around 5 a.m. Um, actually, it's 5 a.m. Pacific time zone, I should say. So that's when like the conversion rates are super high. And if you're if you're looking to get brand awareness, that may not be the time because people are more likely to purchase at that point. They're more likely to to just get on Amazon, make a purchase and get on with their day. Whereas later on in the evening, the conversion rate starts to go down. So this is when you can start to do more of that awareness play and maybe have a budget for that, maybe even consider day party and starting your campaigns later in the day during that window of time when shoppers are more likely to be in browse mode. This way you're not busting through your budget on, on uh, brand awareness. Wow, okay, okay. That's the first time I've heard that. It's very interesting. Uh, what I'm uh, wondering is that, you know, in these awareness-based campaigns, if we're only looking at ACoS, uh, as you said, you know, because these these are not you know meant to convert. I mean, obviously, we would love to convert them and, and you know have that buying cycle within a minute, like you said before. But uh, many times it's not. You know, people need several touch points. So I'm I'm guessing ACoS might not be the best metric to look at because uh, we you know we we're it's a, these are awareness based campaign. So yeah. we, we should expect not to convert. So do you think we should look at other uh, metrics? Because otherwise, we will always be kind of a failure or all those those kind of uh, uh, campaigns, yeah. right? If we only look at ACOS. Yeah, first thing is look at tacos on an overall account level. So we call it true ACOS tacos, which is your ad spend margin impact, which is the amount of money you're actually making to uh, spending to make a sale. It's a really important number. But also look at that on an individual ASIN level, because that really will tell the story of how that ASIN is performing. Is it underperforming relative? Like, is it not spending enough on advertising? In which case, then you can boost up your brand awareness play. Is it overspending? Like maybe you're at 15, 16, 20% tacos, uh, and that's like just eating into your bottom line too much. Then you might want to reduce your brand awareness play. But ultimately, once you've got the tacos under control, then you could start to look at things like cost per 1,000 impressions. 
new to brand sales? Like, what exactly is that spend uh, bringing to the table? You know, we actually call it uh, awareness ad spend inside of the tool. We used to call it unproductive ad spend, but we changed it around to awareness ad spend because realistically, what it's doing is it's bringing awareness to your product. And you want to see like what's going on behind the scene with that awareness ad spend is what is it leading to, you know, ultimately. Yeah, yeah, cool. All very interesting. Let's go to the next phase. It's the consideration yeah. phase. What are the ad types and strategies that you suggest to adopt? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of this, uh, a lot of these ad types, you probably, you know, these, these different strategies you probably heard of before, but I'm going to tie it into consideration phase. So now people are aware of what, to, what you're selling and they're considering your product or another product. They're going to be looking at things like reviews, price, all of these different things. So any kind of competitive advantage that you have, you want to showcase that competitive advantage. You can showcase that in your headline. So you can do a sponsored brand ad once again, but maybe with a different type of headline. Definitely sponsored display ad, product targeting, where you're competing um, and targeting different ASINs on their product detail page. Uh, any ASINs where you have that competitive advantage, you can use all the different ad types. So not just sponsored display. You can do sponsored product, sponsored brand, not as much, but sponsored display, sponsored product ads for sure. Sponsored brand video, I have not seen ads yet on the product page, but that's probably coming. So think about where you have that competitive advantage. Also think about your search term report, wherever you have three or more orders on the search terms. We used to call that campaign the ACOS scraping, but it's also great. And also, we also consider it the consideration campaign because these are the search terms that you know have converted very well and you want to be considered for those search terms. They may not be your winners, your top 20%, but they're they're they've converted, and you want to be you know you, you already know there's a good alignment between the audience and your product. So this is when I would take um, you know ASIN scraping and search term scraping, and across all of the different ad types, I would target those as well because that'll give you the consideration as well. Um, so that is the other thing I want to say is in terms of the headline, where whenever you, if you have something that um, stand, like stands out about your product, you can customize your headline because remember, people are considering you versus someone else, and that's another reason, John Mark. Like I, I like to uh, just break it down into this because it helps you develop a strategy behind why you're making an ad. Like you're not mixing different types of ads and doing an awareness type of headline when you're strict, like really going after uh, a consideration audience. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. It, it makes sense. Again, I, I, I love, you know, this approach to, to think, you know, I guess, you know, everybody it's already um, running those, the, the ads that we just meant, we, we mentioned, but the, the thing is now they all make sense within a, a, a structure and a strategy that goes through the, the, the different buying cycle. So we can tweak it or, or, you know, think of the metrics in a different way, so we we define success in a different way, not just with uh, you know, making an order, a purchase, but you know also in in other way because we we we're thinking that we're moving this customer from one phase to the next and the next. Right, and and this is really interesting too. Like in this phase, like click through rate is really important. We're trying to get the click. We're trying to get people onto our page. And also, I forgot to mention retargeting, remarketing would be great. People who have might have uh, already re uh, hit your page already. You want to get them back on your page. So all of these things are the consideration and 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 getting the, as many touch points as possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, that makes sense. So then the next phase is the purchase decision. So what we do? What's what's the best practices to to target those the, the people in that stage? Yeah. So these are for the high search and the high intent purchase intent search terms where people are really not browsing very much. You'll see in the search query report that people don't go very deep into the search results. They very rarely get on the second page. They're just on Amazon to, to make a purchase. So in this phase, if, if shoppers are there and already in the decision phase, you want to be seen at the very top of Amazon. They're probably not going to see you on the second page or maybe even the bottom of the first page. So whatever you can do with sponsored product ads are the best ones for this, but even sponsored brand ads as well um, to modify your bid to get to top of search to identify which search terms are the high intent and then get there to get that high uh, that high conversion rate search uh, that that sale. This is considered the decision phase of the buying cycle. You know when when it's when somebody goes in and really is ready to purchase, you want to be visible in that stage. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think this is uh, among all. This is uh, the most straightforward kind of the the, yeah. the face that makes more sense. Uh, 
And I guess also most of the customers uh, on Amazon are kind of um, you know in that in that stage. Many 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 customer on Amazon are in that stage already because they you know they just shop, um, they search the the product just because they they want to buy it, and uh, so they they're they're ready and they will probably purchase you know the first few um, few listings that are on top of search. So yeah, that's definitely what converts the best. Uh, yeah, but I'm, yeah, go ahead. Well, well, let's talk about the guts of a sponsored product ad. You know, there's, there's certain things that you can do to, to get up there. And this is, we're talking about these uh, types of uh, campaigns. We're talking more about exact match. You know, we know exactly what target we want to go after. We're going after it with exact match and maybe doing a top of search modifier. You know, uh, that, that's that's like the the combination and a fixed bid. Like those that combination would work really about really well. And then over time, as you have history, maybe you try the d- dynamic up and down. If this is something that could work out really well for you, that's something you may want to test. Uh, but that's what we're talking about in terms of the guts of a sponsored product ad. And you know, likely similar to a sponsored brand ad, although you can't do the modifier for sponsored brand ads. Right, right. Okay, so you're suggesting like fixed bid plus a modifier for top of search. Right, and then un- until it gets, you know, the some some history, the the algorithm gets uh, uh, more data, and then you would turn it to up and down or down only, or what? What do you suggest? I would I would test out up and down in this stage if it's an important search term for you. Just be mindful and test. It's going to be different for every seller. Okay, why do you suggest to to turn that after uh, the algorithm gets some data and starting with uh, with a fixed bid? It goes based on conversion rate. So if a campaign has zero history, we want to build up a little bit of history. Um, now, this could be all theory and speculation on my end, but on based on my experience, we want to have as much history as possible for Amazon to make that decision for us. If we're going to trust them to raise our bid up to 100%. Then we want to make sure we have enough data for them to make the proper a proper decision. Mm, okay. Okay. I see. Interesting. Yeah. That's also something I'm going I'm going to test myself. Cool. Okay. So I think one of the most interesting parts of the buying cycle is then the last one, which is the post post purchase, right? So how do we get our customers to buy again from us? What are the the strategies that we can adopt in terms of PPC? Yeah, this one's really fun, especially when you start seeing your brand name show up in the search term report. So an easy way to do this is to target your brand name across all the different ad types. You know, it's uh, quite a dis- People say, I shouldn't be doing that. I'm going to cannibalize. You may cannibalize a little bit, but you also may lose some sales if you don't do that. Um, so I would I would check to see, we have this in feature inside of Entourage. I would check to see how many sales are coming through branded terms and how many sales are coming through just regular search. That's a really good metric to follow. And you want that number to continuously go up. So track that over time and protect your brand. Now, um, you know, you could you could use brand awareness. I'm sorry, you could use post-purchase. Uh, there's a sponsored display audience, uh, audience. So people have purchased from you before. You can retarget those people once again, which is a great way to play this. Um, you can do ace and defense campaigns where if somebody's actually on your uh, listing, you're protecting your ASIN from being, you know, being your listing from being shown to like other competitors. That's a really good play as well. This is a really easy campaign to set up, very simple and straightforward. Um, not a lot of sellers do it, but I would highly suggest setting some some campaigns up. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I, I totally agree also with uh, one one that you mentioned, you know, protecting your ASIN. It's something I'm doing in actively and I've seen very good results. So th- those are some of the campaigns that are performing the best for me, like targeting my ASINs with the uh, with other ASINs that I, I have, you know, because they're all, you know, kind of variations of each other. So uh, it works very well because to, to conquer the the um, kind of re- retail space, uh, so, uh, the real estate, sorry, real estate space in the, in the page with your own uh, products instead of your competitors. So that, oh, yeah. that has been working very well for me. <laughs> Makes a big difference. <laughs> yes, yes. So, all right. So we're almost at the end. I'd like to ask you our our signature question. What is your best advice to achieve more with less when it comes to Amazon PPC? Uh, you know, I thought about this and I was thinking the, the top thing that you could do is improve your conversion rate because everything's going to work better with an improved conversion rate. Now, I don't know if that's a cop-out answer because you probably heard it before, but any little tweak that you can do to incrementally improve your conversion rate, obviously your ad performance is going to get even better. 
Yeah, advertising is getting more competitive, more challenging. It's good. There's a lot more nuance than there was before. But that that has always been stable the entire time. Improve your conversion rate, better performance with your ads. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with you. I mean, that conversion rate is kind of the the king of all the metrics, right? So most important metrics to to grow and uh, look at. Very nice. Yeah, thank you very much for all your insights. Um, I'm sure people might be interested to understand like where where can they find you what can you offer in case you know they, they like uh, more help if they would like to reach out to you uh, where they can can they find you and what can you offer them yeah head on over to our website um, ppcentourage.com and you could also email me mike at ppcentourage.com i'm also on facebook at the seller ad community and on facebook you can reach me on there as well and yeah, go over to PPC Entourage, sign up for a free trial. And also we're going to give you uh, access to this uh, playbook, which is going to go over all the strategies that we just discussed in sort of like a neat organized way. And hopefully it'll help you understand, uh, you know, strat- how to strategize based on the buying cycle. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Mike, again. Uh, guys, remember, uh, the f- we in every episode, we always have a, a complementary material. So uh, for this episode, Mike is sharing with us the ads playbook. It's a, it's a really big and uh, full of inform- uh, very valuable insights about PPC and, and how to set up these uh, campaigns based on the buying cycle. So go to the, the sellerprocess.com, find this episode, and you will, you will see the link in the show notes or in the YouTube video in the description, you will find the, the links to, to download this uh, this PDF. Uh, go, remember to do it because it's really valuable. There is lots of information, so I really suggest you to, to download it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mike, again. It was a pleasure to have you. Awesome. Thanks, Marcos. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Guys, remember again, the key to success is to emulate the best. So uh, take action on the insights that Mike just shared and uh, download the, the PDF and, uh, and uh, put in, in practice all the, the things you've learned today. Have a productive week and I'll see you in the next episode. Hey, entrepreneurs, I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview. If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team, so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high-level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook, where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less. Optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks, and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business. Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you. And leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business. And have a productive week.